Hi. In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to sign up for VGAP and connect it to your SAP CPI or cloud integration system and create the first transport. First, we'll sign up here. We will use our email address. And we'll select the cloud version. Test. And now we will wait until we receive a confirmation that this license has been created. So now I've received a login key to it, and we can put in here a password for it. We will press reset. And now we can log in using this user. And the first thing we need to do is to create a connection to the landscape. So we'll see here we've gone here, create CPI agent. We've added some improved guides to connect to CPI agents. And if we select our PI, the CPI system here, the URL for it, we will enter our email here. Uh, sometimes you would need to enter the SU, so if you're using Neo, and then we need to add the password for it. And this is obviously sometimes a little challenging to, to find the correct one. Uh, the requirement is that it is not using Universal ID. It has quite a lot of access to it. And then we can see we're getting these things. If we are not getting this, uh, there are some different troubleshootings that you can try out um, about accessing the system using this approach. We'll then get to select a few packages that we need to use for, for this. So we select up the three packages, we select OK. So we got this file, we select it here, and now we'll press here to synchronize where we were synchronizing these three packages. The reason we are selecting three packages is to make it easier for you to do this first synchronization, getting everything up and running. Uh, you can deselect this, uh, but we do recommend that you just keep synchronizing these three or uh, five packages that you end up working with. And this will take a little while, depending on the number of systems you have, uh, landscapes, etc. Yeah, the reason we're getting more than the three is that sometimes these packages overlap and you have it all, both in queue and test uh, that we will see in a minute. And obviously the first is takes a little longer, so it takes one minute. So now we can see all of these different iFlows here. And what you can then do is you can click on an iFlow. So if you take an iFlow here, we'll take, uh, and it needs to be an iFlow, not an iFlow configuration. Uh, so, and if you only have iFlow with configurations, you can easily just click here. You can see that it's where used. What we can then do is we can click here. Can make us more modifications in it just to show that we have been here demo, demo save as version so now we just want to create a new version we remember it's 102 and we can then go back here so it says here go into the tool we can go back here to attract objects and we can press synchronize again with these packages that we have created here. Uh, and now it should be significantly fast because we have all the right objects already in place. And we can see 
Okay, also let, let's we can see there's one new version here. Synchronization finished in 15 seconds. So now if we go to the top here, we can see we have this new version here. And if we click on this, we can go here and it says here compare versions. So we can make modification, compare versions here with our viewer. So we can see at this point in time which which items were changed as a part of this. So there's nothing new there or changed there. Here we then have a new cell that was added. So it is pretty easy to see changes in it. We also have it deep to its HTML mapping report where you can see the precise code that was changed as a part of this. This makes it really easy for you to manage these items and understand what is going on with with the different versions. So that was the first part about creating a connection to it. Now the next step is we need to look at the transports. And for us to do that, we will first check the landscapes here. And in the landscape here, we do have a one landscape here. It is managed under composite landscapes. And composite landscapes is our way of creating landscape from dev to queue and from queue to production. Uh, we go to manage landscape here. We can click on the environment here. We can see which systems we have been using for this. We can configure if we want to have uh, approval in and who should approve these things, etc. And who can transport it. We can specify and here it has come with a preset of uh, receiver mapping and what would happen is that once we we because we have only one system we need to add some pre and post fixes to all the objects they would then be added here um, and we do have option here to specify different parameters that will be placed like dev to QA uh, and sub dev to sub QA and we then scroll to the top here, update the current landscape, and we can see the mapping of the different objects that exist. And now we've updated the landscape to encounter all of these different uh, objects that we have. So now we have trans or set up a landscape. And if you definitely need to, once you're finished with the tutorial, go through here and create your own landscape. Uh, but we just wanted to give you one landscape that you can start working with. First is you would click here and you would sign ticket. The demo here is uh, demo text. We would assign a iFlow to it. We would assign a Jira ID, not necessary. Oh. And we will write a description here. It will request the licenses we need for this. And then press save again. So now we have created a transport with these objects in. So we can see we have the configuration and the iFlow. And we can see here it has two revisions so we can do comparison of it. We can attach all dependent objects. This will attach uh, all artifacts that's a part of this. To, which makes it easier to understand what's going on. Um, and then it says here, go to track objects, attach all dependent objects. We can go to test cases to look for, for relevant test cases. Once you've created a test case or an object, you'll be able to see it here. And now we're ready to start the transport. So we press the start transport button, and this will create a transport of these specific objects. And we can then create it. And now we have an option here to validate the transport. And we can see here um, the configuration for this object. If we had added some of these values to our landscape comparison, they would be inserted here. But we could also go in here and just write specific values we want. Press save and go back. Now, if we had set up uh, uh, approval we could send it to approval uh, but since we did not do that we can just select import and now it will show who created this transport and then we will see what's going on with it and then 
it has logged all the items that's part of this. Now we just need to link the last uh, couple of objects as part of it. So now we can see it has been configured correctly. Um, we can go into the iFlow, so we can go to our CPI system here. And we can see we have now created a package that is called sample QA migration 2, where we have this new object in. And if we check the parameters here, we would then be able to see that this has been set up. And if we look at the configuration, we should then see that this has been configured. So all in all, this makes it really easy for us to understand what's going on. If we go back to our ticket, we can set it to resolved. And then we can go to report and create the report. This will generate a report of all the artifacts that we have as a part of this, showing which object has been attached, these kind of things. And what we look at here is we have the, the description, we have the, the objects that's a part of this, test cases, reports, and then the different transport and potential issue approved and imported. I hope this has been helpful and you can see how fast it is to actually run and create a transport. Thanks for watching.